Greetings, internet friends. Welcome back. Former Thrax here. Gonna play some more Terra Invicta. And yes, we're gonna restart again. <laughs> Get used to it. Um, yeah, so I gave it some more thought, and uh, I want to get some of this footage for Terry and Victor over to my YouTube channel. Now that I've got a little better idea what's going on, and I can better explain things, uh, I think it'll be a little more interesting and cohesive an experience for, for the YouTube folks, and uh, hopefully for you folks over here on Twitch that have not yet seen me playing Terry and Victor. Um, so, let's, uh, let's jump on in. Uh, first up, what's Terra Invicta? Well, it's a, a new to early access game, uh, kind of XCOM-ish, not quite 4X-ish. It's I've, I see 4X put on it uh, occasionally in other sources, and I don't know that it's really a 4X. It's a grand strategy XCOM setting slash flavory geopolitical simulator that dovetails into um, space industrialization in a, a very detailed and hard science manner. Uh, and then eventually from there goes into fleet combat as you use your uh, materials from the, uh, the, the space uh, industrialization side to build ships and uh, try to defend Earth uh, against the alien invasion. And that's kind of what we're facing. So it's an alien invasion kicked off and uh, we're going to try to do our thing. Um, so there's uh, multiple factions in the game that the player can choose from. Uh, they have very, very different uh, philosophies or goals for each faction. So it'll give a lot of opportunity for interesting gameplay there and uh, replayability, depending on which faction you take. They can have wildly divergent... Um, actually, uh, the things they're going to be wanting to focus on. So you'll, you'll kind of see when we get in, and I'll talk about it a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead and hit new game, and uh, I'm not going to explain every single thing here. I'm just going to kind of play, and I'll chit-chat about various things as we go. Uh, but this is not a how-to-play Terra Invicta kind of thing, so it's more of a gameplay watch-along with former Thrax explaining a few things. Um, so yeah, so if you haven't seen Terra Invicta, welcome. Uh, it is a very deep, complex game, and it's taking me a bit to kind of grok things, but I got a fair understanding of the at least early part of the game now, uh, right up to the part where we start uh, moving up into space. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to speed through some of that early stuff and get to some of the more meaty stuff. If you've been following along, yes, this is a restart again. <laughs> you managed to win a run yet? Nah, I can't win if I don't uh, if I don't actually play through. I just been restarting after each stream as uh, I got a feeling that uh, I know more now and I can do it better and I can explain what I'm doing a little better and uh, I get more of an urge to start over again than I do to continue playing one through. Um, so that's kind of where we're at. Okay, so we're going to do the same as before. Modern scenario, full solar system, all eight factions. We are going to stick with the resistance. That's my habit for these kinds of games is I, I stick with one of the factions. Uh, nations, corporations, classes, whatever. I usually stick with one until I get a fairly solid understanding of the gameplay, the progression, and how the game moves through its various phases. Once I've got that done and I'm feeling comfortable, then I usually diverge off and check out all the other things. But it helps me in my learning process to play the same thing over and over again. So if you're hoping to see a, a different faction this time around, uh, unfortunately, you're going to be disappointed. <laughs> it's going to be the resistance again. And the same normal difficulty, no tutorial stuff. Let's hit start. Hey there, I blinked. Hey, uh, how is it? Yeah, it's hard to call. I'm still nervous about making recommendations <laughs> or judgment calls on this game. I really like where it's going and what it's doing. I'm a little worried about repetition of some things and how long it's going to be interesting in the geopolitical side once you hit the space side. So I think there's still some pacing issues likely going to be coming as I get further into the game. And uh, I've heard nothing but uh, praise and horror about the space side of things uh, in regards to the detail level, but also how complex it gets and how hard it is to actually grasp for the, the human involved, the meat puppet in uh, controlling the stuff. So we'll see. I've only seen a small portion of the gameplay so far. And it is not a 4X. <laughs> Everybody keeps saying 4X. It's not a 4X. It's missing an X. <laughs> there's, 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 there's no exploration. You can see everything. <laughs> we remember the day the... Grand strategy. Use grand strategy. Uh, but I do like the way they've got things set up. Now realize this is like days into its early access so 
while you can play the whole game, they obviously definitely do have things they need to work on. I haven't had any issues with bugs or crashes or anything like that that I've noticed. Um, I've had a few questions on some oddnesses I saw, but it could have been me just not understanding the gameplay. But um, I'm really impressed with what they've got starting. So I can say that much at least. And it has a ton of gameplay hours that are available. A single playthrough, I wouldn't be surprised for even a knowledgeable player with a lot of hours in the game. A single full playthrough, 60 hours, 80? I don't really know. I don't know how it's going to stretch out when you hit the space race stuff. Um, you can get into space fairly quickly, four or five hours. You can be on the moon and you, you can be starting the industrialization side. But I don't know how much further it lengthens out beyond that. But um, I don't know, 20, 40 hours per run, maybe, something like that. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, but it's really going to depend on what your tolerance is for... For watching little numbers get bigger slowly. <laughs> There's a lot of that. When when you're looking at a number in your, your nation priority screen and you're waiting for that number to go up and you highlight it and it shows you the details, sometimes the information they're showing, it'll say something like, this will increase by, and the answer that it's going to increase by will have like seven places after the decimal. <laughs> it'll be like zero point zero 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 forty eight <laughs> that's the kind of numbers i'm talking about that you deal with sometimes in this so yeah you gotta be prepared for a lot of numbers uh thankfully i've got a pretty good handle on the interface and the ui ux how to move around how to find what i need i i got some ideas on uh, what i want to be working on uh what the expectations are and all that so, here we go at the start. Uh, UFO crashes on Earth. That's the big event. The world is shocked. Oh my gosh. Uh, a very identified UFO crashes on Earth. No, no doubt that it is a UFO initially, at least to the factions that are going to be vying for control. Um, so that's the news here. UFO has crashed. An alien vessel crashed down in the Manaus region in Brazil. While the wreckage is unrecoverable, we suspect an alien life form escaped into the surrounding countryside. Ooh. Greetings, Commander. I am pleased to report the council has appointed... Okay, we're not going to listen to all that. I'm not going through all the storyline, uh, audio, and, and so on. Uh, we have an objective to investigate the crash. We shall do so. There's the information for the UFO crash down site. We don't care about that initially. And here we go. Here's what you get to look at. We have the Earth. The planet. Terra. This is Terra. This is the Terra part of Terra Invicta. And Invicta, if you're not a Latin scholar or, uh, you know, fluent in Latin, is uh, unbeaten, undefeated. Terra, undefeated. Earth, unbeaten. Uh, so that's where the name comes from. But yeah, we got a nice spinny globe. Pretty pretty smooth. I'm spinning it with the WASD keys currently. I can use the mouse, but it's way over, way over tuned. <laughs> As you can, even little mouse movements. I have to, like, micro-move my mouse to have it be in any way controllable or land where I want to. Which I don't like. And there's no setting for it yet. Hopefully they put a setting in somewhere that'll let us change this uh, this this spinny speed. It's it's way over speedy. Alright. Uh, but yeah, a very nice looking globe. It doesn't look so good when you zoom way in. I mean, not, not impressive in that regard. But, uh, you know, it looks nice at this level. Now, from this level, we can actually just mouse wheel out. There you go. There's the solar system. We have mouse wheeled out to see the entire solar system pretty quickly and easily. All of these are places you can go. These are all, uh, you know, bodies that we can actually visit. We can go out and visit Salacia, Pangu, Neptune, whatever. Eventually, we'll have the tech to get there. There are reasons why we might want to go out there. We'll, we'll slow zoom back in here to the inner solar system. You got the Kuiper belt. You got the asteroid belt. You got, uh, you know, all the belts and uh, all the planets that go with them. Zoom further in. Still looking pretty good. We can pan, pivot, tilt all the different directions as we want to. This will be important later. We'll keep heading in towards Earth. Now we're getting into the Earth-Luna orbits, and uh, these little points are the Lagrange points, uh, points of equivalent gravity that are stable places to put, um, you know, habitats and things you want to keep in position. Um, we'll keep zooming in. So there's there's Luna, the Moon, more Lagrange points. Get closer to the planet. So these are the currently existing space stations. We have the ISS and uh, we have the Cheonggong. Those are the only two existing uh, orbital structures, habitats. Let's jump back into the planet. 
All right, so yeah, we can move around, we can zoom, we can jump around, we can use, uh, go to the planet, go to the solar system. Later, I'll be able to click over here once we have um, habitats and so on to zoom in and out very quickly and easily. But, pretty good system. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so the general storyline is aliens have landed, uh, an alien ship has crash landed, aliens loose, and more are going to be coming on the way soon. We represent the leader of a faction called the Resistance. It's not a nation. It's kind of a shadowy, behind-the-scenes um, puppet apparatus. And we're going to be taking over or influencing the nations of the world so that we can dictate or direct their resources to ourselves and to our goals. So each of the factions is going to be doing that independently and competing with each other for control over the various resources of the Earth so that we can uh, determine how the, the response to the aliens is going to go. Some of the factions are going to help the aliens, the, uh, the vis the, the, not the visitors. <laughs> uh, let's look at the list. Do we have the list yet, actually? Do we know who's out there? Yeah, we do. So we've got, these are the six that I am not. We're the resistance. There's humanity first. Generally speaking, roughly, they are die, alien, die. I'm going to chase you down and kill you. Then I'm going to fly into space, go to your home planet, and kill all your friends and relatives, and then we're going to burn your planet. Not necessarily in that order. Uh, so they're very, very hardcore. Kill them all, kill them all, make them dead. Uh, the initiative is kind of an Illuminati, take over the government, make money. Uh, the aliens are a hoax. They're not really here. It's just all a government conspiracy, and we're going to take advantage of the chaos and, uh, you know, make ourselves better. The servants are the ones they think the aliens are alien, are, are divine beings that are our just rulers. They are, are bowing down to the aliens, and they're going to do everything they possibly can to assist the aliens. So they'll try to take over nations and nation states and armies and uh, actually help the aliens in any way they can during the uh, invasion. Are the aliens invading? What are they doing? We don't know yet. We'll find out as the story progresses. Uh, the Protectorate. Uh, kind of, that's, the Protectorate, the Academy are kind of middle ground in different ways. They are, uh, yeah, there's aliens out there. We want to be semi-equal, but just under their government, but don't kill us all, that kind of thing. I don't really, I have, I have to look at the, uh, do we even know? <laughs> I don't remember the Academy one. They're more the scientists bent, and uh, I don't remember what their specific goals are. Project Exodus, they're just the nopers. They just want to nope right on out of here. They're like, oh, aliens are coming? All right, we're out of here. Let's build spaceships. Let's build arcs. Let's load up, and let's go live somewhere else. Uh, so that's Exodus. Pretty, pretty easy to remember those guys. Uh, they will do everything they can to focus the world uh, science projects towards engines and all the things they need to get their big spaceships built so their their laser focus is on getting to the the technology and the materials necessary to build ships and get out of here uh so each faction has their own goals their own uh, uh the, their own bent in the way they want to do things they might go after different research chains um things like that so uh, we are the resistance, though. We're, our, our opinion is aliens bad. Let's get them off Earth. But then, you know, everything's OK after that. Let's let's maybe maybe not in the solar system either. <laughs> but we're not going to chase them down and, and try to kill them and all that. All right. And we'll learn more as we go along. So the first thing we need to do a few things. Um, the way the game plays is the possible real time. And there are. Uh, what it does is you'll have an opportunity for your agents called counselors, of which we have two, Harvey Jolie and Nina Cheval Chevaleva. Yeah, Nina Chevaleva. Uh, those are our two counselors. We're going to hire more counselors. They are basically our agents provocateur. They're the folks that we're going to send out on missions to various locations to try to take control of control points in countries, try to suborn counselors from other factions, steal their tech. Uh, just all sorts of things. They're the ones that are our active pieces that we move around the map to do things. So we're going to assign them missions. Then we unpause the game. It rolls time forward and events will occur. Their actions will be completed in various timings. And then we'll have another opportunity to give actions. And initially it's one week. One week will pass between each uh, mission assignment phase. A uh, little bit later, it's going to switch to a two week time period. Um, yeah, so that's what we're going to do. Initially, we're going to do a few things. So I'm going to go to research. We're going to change the research setup. The top section is global research that everybody is contributing towards. So 
all the factions generate research points and they can on this page dictate where they want their research to go. So right now I have only a single box ticked so 100% of my research is going into these, this box or into this category. The boxes are just used to weight your contribution. By that I mean if I put a box here as well, now it's a 50-50 split because there's only two ticks, two boxes, so it just splits it evenly. If I put another tick here, it's now a two to one split, so it's 33% and 67%. And that's all this does. Then it becomes a 25 to 75 split with four boxes. So the box system is used both here on the research screen as well as when you're dictating uh, how countries are gonna utilize their resources. You'll see that later. Uh, but for the moment, we're going to uh, cancel that. Let's go. Um, I want to do not that. Let's actually go for a quick one. So uh, of these selections, these are for my faction only, the lower section of that research tree. This is just going to get me some influence. So it's a quick one we can do to gain a little bit of influence. I'm going to need that influence in the short term. We're going to do a few of the easy ones, and then we'll go switch it to the management research eventually. But for now, let's go ahead and select that. And I'm going to also throw some support into We Are Not Alone. And I might double that up. We'll, we'll see how things go. I'm going to watch the contributions of the others. It's important because whoever contributes the most research points to a category in this top section, they get a couple of benefits. Benefit one, when the research is finished, they get to choose the next research in that chain that the that is going to be uh, put into place for the next research cycle. So if we finish, we are not alone and we are the most, uh, we have donated the most points. We get to pick the next one, the next research to uh, put into that slot. In addition, you get a small bonus towards research in that chain going forward. And I haven't seen an actual numerical indicator anywhere. It says that that's true in the, I think in the codex, but I haven't seen it, noticed it and don't know where to look to actually see that bonus but supposedly, according to the codex, that's how it works. So you get those two benefits. Uh, so we want those two things. So we're done with research. We've done our changes there. Well, let's go look at our counselors. So these are our two counselors, Harvey and N Nina. Hi, Nina. I didn't know Nina was masculine and feminine. Is, is that true? <laughs> In Russia, do we have men named Nina? Huh. All right. If so... My apologies, but uh, that just seems odd to my American brain. However, uh, so Harvey and Nina, uh, let's take a look. So perception, good. That's uh, how you influence people. Uh, so when you're trying to take control of nation states or you're doing public um, public addresses to explain how the glories of your faction, that, that's very helpful. Uh, investigation, espionage, command, administration, science, security, and loyalty. So, I have no good scientists. Perception and admin is okay. Better perception, no admin, I don't like. No security. I really don't like this guy. We'll have to look a little closer. There's more details, which we'll, we'll look at now. So, all right, Harvey, what else you got? You got the government flag, and you're a puppet master. Which gives us a little bit of influence income and plus one to espionage when being detected by other counselors. So in that circumstance, he gets a bonus to his espionage rating. Not impressive. I am not impressed. Huh. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't like this guy. I don't like either of these guys. I'm, I'm a little unhappy about our, <laughs> our random role of, of people. Am I unhappy enough just to do a restart before we fire this off? That is the question, because these are really poor. Also has a pretty stock bog average mission set that doesn't imp improve my opinion any. All right. Uh, even well, he's at least got public campaign. But even that, bad. Media Darling's okay. That's helpful in certain circumstances. I, I really don't like either of these guys. Man, these are terrible. Uh, let's do a re-roll. These guys are just really bad. Let's pop back out and do a restart. Do, do, do. Come on. <laughs> there we go. New game. 
start. Yeah, that those guys were the worst two I have seen yet. <laughs> we're not going to start off with the worst one. Aurora, ah, Aurora Four X. I admire but cannot play Aurora Four X. <laughs> Can't do it. It, it. it exceeds even my bounds of uh, acceptability in regards to uh, just grognardery. <laughs> so. Nah, no Roar 4X on the channel. Either hey Calder Bats. Yeah, I'm really enjoying it so far. A little worried about some of the nitpicky details that I'm not convinced yet just how useful some of the information in the game is, which has been a problem I've had with a few games in the past. All right, anytime now. Get me back in here. No. Continue. 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 Close. Research. That. Change. That. All right, we're back where we were. Let's start again. All right, let me let me let me give you all that information all over again. Just kidding. Let's go look at our counselors. Uh, Adrian and Magotzi. What do we got? Seven and six. I like seven and six. That's a good start. With some, yeah, that's that's pretty good all around. Wow, science is low, but that's not unusual. But four and up for every other stat, that's impressive. Eight and zero. Damn it! I hate having low admin or no admin. No command. It can investigate a bit. Not much espionage. Not much security. So I'm not real excited here. Connected ethical pariah. Ouch. Um, where's he getting all the persuasions thing if this is minus two? Oh, this is Pariah, Pariah in his homeland. Okay, so if we stay out of Madagascar, he's okay. <laughs> so, uh, nothing too impressive in the traits. None of the really fun ones. And enough persuasion. He's got control nation and public campaign, so we've got some uses for him. Uh, turn counselor, inspire. All right, he, he's okay. He, he's not bad. Uh, Control Nation ah, doesn't have public. Nope, no public campaign. Uh, Defend Interest is okay. Advise is okay. But usually I want my advisor to be high science, so probably not going to use for that. Both of them are pretty eh. Pretty eh. Hopefully the one we get to pick here in a second will be able to fill in some gaps. All right. Uh, back out of there. Let's hit the recruit button. So, what we're doing here is we are we are recruiting another counselor for our faction. We have 50 influence points. That's what these cost to recruit. Some of them cost 30, some of them cost 60. I've never really seen a reason why there's a difference. I don't know why. I don't particularly see the 60s being better than the 30s a lot of times. So, I don't know what the deal is there. But uh yeah, let's let's take a look through them. So, main things I'm looking for are perception admin science and then their 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 class their job though so, because that will dictate a lot of the missions they're allowed to go on i do want to get a spy mixed in that's really good for a spy eight investigation eight espionage five security take a look here undercover bonus furtive aware conspiracy that's a really strong spy lineup for traits really strong a lot of good ones in there. Undercover giving a bonus. Furtive giving bonuses. Aware. A lot of this is only going to come into play during certain circumstances, like when they're being investigated by enemy uh, counselors and things like that. Um, yeah. And then the mission list, the other really important thing when we're trying to pick a new counselor. The, one, the two we start with, we got no choice. That's why I bailed out of the other one, because they were just really terrible. This one I'll probably stick with. We're looking pretty good here with at least one that's in pretty good shape and the other one's meh. But uh, we got Control Nation, so I can send them out gathering control points. Uh, we got Purge and Crackdown. That's also really important to get somebody that can do those. Not immediately. This is important when you're trying to weed other factions out of control points for certain countries. 
You do a crackdown to, uh, as it says, disable the benefits of a control point, removing defenses, making it easier to purge. So first you do a crackdown on it, and then you try to purge it, which basically means take it over. Uh, also has public campaign, only a persuasion, a persuasion of three, so that's going to be a fairly weak public campaign, but it's nice to see it. Unrest, surveil, and ooh, we got investigate. We don't have... We've got turn and assassinate, but we don't have um, put them in jail. <laughs> we don't. We, I forget the name of it. We don't have grab them and stick them in a box. That's the only thing I see we don't have. Steel project even. All right. So, yeah, I'm really liking the looks of uh, Methism. A lot of options there. So, so the spy, I'm, I'm leaning heavily towards the spy so far. I, I would love to get... Let's see, activist, eight, one admin. I'm just looking for any highlights in the 30 cost ones that might pop up next. Let's look at an inspector. Aware, affluent, national hero, but national hero in India. So I, unless I happen to go after India, that won't come into play. Crack down and purge, invest. Ah, oh, there it is, detain counselor. That's the combo I like right there. Crack down and purge along with control, which is nice, and then the uh, investigate and detain. You investigate, 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 then you detain them, because the investigations get you more and more information about them and make the detain action more likely. And then once you got them detained, they're kind of at your mercy, and all the die rolls against them are going to be really good, and you can try to steal their organizations or do other things to them, so... Uh, that's a really good combo. So I'm liking this guy for, if nothing else, the missions list is really good. Um, Stat-wise, eh, nothing, nothing really stands out. So not impressed there, but really good mission set. Who else we got? We got uh, we got a tech mogul. Tech moguls are sometimes fun. I do need a science person. Affluent, connected, ethical, academic. Those are all okay, but the mission list sucks. We can't even investigate alien sites with him. Public campaign is okay, but uh, yeah, don't like this guy. Uh, who else? A judge. Judges can be pretty fun. Government. Non grata. Cannot perform missions in rivals of my home nation. All right. Again, India, huh? Ethical lone wolf suspicious a lone wolf judge. <laughs> An agitator judge. <laughs> this is a funny judge. Good judge, huh? So a weird set of uh, points allocated though. I mean investigation. Uh crack down and purge, investigate, detain. He'd he'd be okay in that set as well. A little better persuasion for the control. All right, he's he's not bad. An executive perception and admin is in pretty good spot. Up, oh, he's an addict. That's not great. He's a quick learner though. Uh oh. Minus one to espionage. Minus two security. Minus four security. When our money is, uh, yeah, he's got to he's got to pay for bodyguards. That's usually not a problem. But uh, securing security will be an issue for him. Control crackdown purge. Um, hmm, and then one more tech mogul. Corrupt. An affluent, corrupt tech mogul. Control and public advise, but, and okay, science. All right, I just really got to decide what I need near term. We're going to get a fourth one unlocked in not too distant future. I can probably leave off looking for the um, the inspector type until that fourth spot so I need to go back out and look at these two again real quick what do we got covered you can't really do anything except for the control nation I'm really not happy with the bottom half of this guy. I guess I'm not really happy. I'm, I'm pretty grumpy about the people they keep giving me. These are not really good starter characters. If for no other reason than just the mission sets. I'm really annoyed about the mission sets. The stats are okay on this first one, but the mission set is terrible.
can't really advise. Control would be okay, and that's really pretty much it. So unless I can get her some some uh, orgs that are going to help her out, uh, Aegis Defense is the only one. And that's influence and uh, ops bonus with one command and two security. I mean, it's okay, but it doesn't really supplement her in the way I want. Uh, yeah, none of, none of our initial organizations are going to really help. So what I'm looking at here is these are basically modifiers that you can apply for your counselors. There's a set of organizations. It's a big list. This is just the initial draw. And more will rotate on, and later we can unlock another set of five uh, that will be available. Um, but it's like a pool with a, or a deck of cards where we can only see five now, but there are more that will come later. Of varying strengths, the strength of them in general is dictated by the number of stars you see. So a two star is generally better than a one star. Um, but the starting set here is also not, uh, not too impressive for me. All right, so we've got one that we're going to mostly be doing, running around doing control nation with our high persuasion. The other one... Also high persuasion, so we've got control. I got one. I need. I, I'm hoping to get one more at least public campaign. So I need somebody that can do another public campaign, and also be able to. We've got the investigate alien off of this one, but she'd be terrible at it. All right. Doesn't usually take me this long to make this selection, but this is just an odd set. Uh, so if we're not going to go with the. Enemy of the state. Costa Rica. I won't be spending any time in Costa Rica. God, look how short that mission list is. What are they doing to me here? Why you keep doing this game? <laughs> I keep going back to the addict. Good persuasion. Decent administration and command. No science. Purge and crackdown, which I forget. That uh, that goes off investigation, so we'd be pretty bad at investigate or inv <laughs> bad at crackdowns, and even worse. So these are essentially totally useless because the two skills they rely on are really low and or zero. So it, it doesn't even matter that he has these; they'd be just just bog terrible at him. So, all right, I can't I can't consider him, even though I like some of his other stuff. Troll public, at least he can do that. He's got uh, five science, which wouldn't be a bad advisor. Not much else. Corrupt is what minus money. Ooh. I think I can get rid of the corrupt eventually, possibly through um, leveling them up. Okay, it's okay, it's okay. Even though he doesn't have anything in the list here to actually use these for the most part, maybe steel. Mid-level admin. He, he's an all-arounder. He's he's okay at a lot of stuff with these numbers. I just wish his mission list was a little longer and he didn't have corrupt. So he's probably still the the number one on my list. Uh, can't buy. He actually is pretty good all around. We can take control of the nation with five of persuasion. It's not too bad. He's got crackdown and purge. At a really good crackdown skill number and an okay purge number. We can put him on defense. We can advise with zero science. Probably wouldn't do. He's got the investigate really high. Detain runs off of. Oh, detain runs off of investigation also. I, I think we'll get this guy. He's an all arounder. He can help me with taking over nations. He doesn't have the public speaking, which is what I was hoping for in, in another character. But uh, he's got other things we can do. So let's grab him. All right, Yaza, you're part of the team. Welcome. 
we won't have enough money for the fourth slot. We don't have enough ca or enough influence. And we'll unlock this one later. So we got two more we'll be adding. This one in the near term, this one in the long term. So we'll hopefully have a better list. All right. Uh, so let's... Why are we on confirm assignments now? Usually you have to fast forward slightly. All right. Uh, we're going to focus, as I have before, on uh, the U.S. We're going to try to take the U.S. as quickly as possible, get it fully under our control, and uh, get to space. So, to do that, we can't go straight into the U.S. We're actually going to have to go into Canada and Mexico first. By doing so and getting control of those nations, when I start rolling public campaigns and such to increase our, our, uh, uh, doo -doo -doo, our public opinion... So currently we're at 3%. <laughs> we're, we're one of the little tiny slivers. Uh, we're that little sliver there. But we need to change that. So we need to get public opinion on our side to increase our chances because the U.S. is such a rich country. Uh, and the GDP is what determines a lot of it. But we have six control points we have to take control of. And you'll see me trying to work on that here in a bit. But just understand that we can't go directly for the U.S. It's absolutely impossible. We need to get Canada and Mexico. They're neighboring nations uh, directly adjoining. And they will give us a bonus when we try to go after the U.S. So those first, then the U.S. So we're going to go to Canada first. So we'll click there. Uh, we have three control points for Canada that we need to get control of. Uh, we'll go to Adrian here, and we're going to tell her to... Oh, that's right. I only have one person that can do this. <laughs> Damn it. Where do you need me? I need you in the U.S. Get over here. Or in Canada, I mean. Get over here. So what we're doing is we're in a public campaign. We're going to try to raise the uh, public opinion for our faction. And uh, if we want to, we can throw money at it to increase our percentage chance. I think 84 is enough. We must persuade the people. So, they're on the way line. with you. We're going to... Yeah, we're going to go investigate the aliens, I think, with you. We will recon the site. And okay. then finally, unfortunately, I don't have much I can do with you. I was really hoping to get two people that had the public opinion. We don't have that. What are our chances? We have a 0% chance. Isn't that nice? <laughs> it doesn't even matter if I try to spend influence I don't have. This is going to be rough. We got really low opinion in Canada to start with, which I don't think I've had this low opinion previously, and I don't have the people to uh, to influence the public opinion fast enough. This might not go quite as long or as fast as I was hoping. Uh, stabilize, surveil. None of that's going to be useful to me right now. Actually, let's uh, let's surveil. Let's surveil where the aliens crashed. There's going to be other factions sending their counselors to this location. So we have a, a counselor of our own going to sit there sipping tea and coffee and uh, watching for other agents. All right, so we're all done, right? Everybody's, yeah, we got one person doing that. Everybody's done. So we can see the nation that they're in, and we can see what job they're doing via the little icons of my three counselors. So that's what's happening. Uh, the rest of the interface, fairly standard for the type. We have various resources across the top. Of particular note in the early game is money. Just money, money. Cash money. Uh, influence, which is a spendable income or resource, like a currency. You build it up uh, through its generation, and then you can spend it as needed for various things. This is ops. Same thing in the, how it's used. It builds up, and you spend it when you need it. And it's for usage during small-scale combat and espionage operations. We have boost. This is boost capability. This is getting things into orbit. We have no boost capability currently. Super important. As we take over the U.S., we'll, we'll get boost generation and start building up some supply. Mission control. It's a limiter for how many things you can control in space. So this is how much you can lift up to space. This is how many things you can actively control that are up there in space. Uh, research points, not used the same way. Research points is a capacity that you assign via the research screen we looked at earlier, and it just auto-applies your amount of research via the percentages you set, so it doesn't build up and you don't just click a button to spend it. It's auto-spent on whatever priorities you've given. And then finally, the super important, control point cap. So I have zero control points because I haven't taken any uh, control point locations in a country yet, and I have a maximum allowed of 132. The soft cap, you can go over it, but if you do, you get escalating penalties, mostly and first up to your influence generation. 
Um, this is super important. I have 132 points of cap. Controlling the entire U.S. with all six points is like 160 all by itself. 108, 170? I forget. Something like that. So I, I'm going to have to either bump this number up, which there are ways to do it, uh, you know, or suffer some penalties if I try to capture all of the U.S. with my, my current cap of 132. All right, so we've given our orders to our counselors. We've done our research. We're pretty much done. We're going to hit confirm assignments. We're going to tell the clock to go at full speed, and we're going to hit this button. Things are going to start spinning. Xenoforms detected in Vienna region. So we've, uh, there are aliens running around, flora and fauna, in the uh, Vienna region. We have surveilled the location. A new project has now become available, Alien Flora Project. So as time goes by and events occur, various projects will open up. When you research various things, projects will open up. Projects will just keep opening up. There's a lot of research, a lot of projects, a lot of events. One humanity, the growing realization that we are not the sole sapient species in the universe, is causing many to see their fellow humans in a new light, leading to hopes that we can overcome our capacity for strife to address the alien arrival as one people. All right, so what's going to happen here is all nations are going to gain a cohesion. I'm not going to talk about that right now, but it's one of the statistics for the countries. Basically, everybody's pulling together because we see this outside uh, possible danger. We don't know, but cohesion of the, the nations goes up as the population uh, focuses their attention and uh, focuses the we against the they. All right, select so management team. This is where we can pick basically a, a bit of a bonus. Um... This gives us some influence generation, science generation, ops generation, and money generation. Uh, I'm going to go for the... I sometimes go for the ops because it's hard to find other resources to increase that. But I just don't use it often enough. In the early game, it's all about my needing influence, really. Especially with what we're going to try to do to with the U.S. So we'll try to maximize that. Oh, well, there's a start. <laughs> we got a critical success on our first mission. Public campaign mission, there where we were trying to raise public cam uh, uh, our public campaigning in uh, Canada. Uh, for the resistance faction, we have uh, changed support by 18% in our favor. We went from 3% to 21% just in that one critical success roll. It's critical success. I don't know the actual rule behind this. I seem to see critical successes. I don't know if it's when you roll 1 to 10 or if it's combined with your percent chance and you have to be like below 10% of your, your total success chance or something. I, I don't know the actual rule, but if you roll a low number, generally you get a critical success and you get a higher result. Critical failures are also possible um, with negative effects. So that's good news. Only thing left is uh, the alien. Investigating alien activity mission complete. So we've uh, we've got some information about the UFO crash down. Uh, we're going to go small bonus to our xenology research going forward. We have completed a faction objective. Investigating the site was one of our objectives. So we have gained the following 20 influence and 20 research. That's great. Now a new objective has been generated. Research alien signatures. So that's a new project that we can research. Enemy counselor has been detected. So we, we, we have spotted the signs of an, uh, another faction's counselor in the area in uh, the Alpine states where we set up our surveillance. New project again available. And uh, October 8th. UN Security Council meets. This always happens on this first time. Um, basically, the, the, the superpowers of the world all yell and point their fingers at each other and demand that everybody share their info and but they don't want to share their own and all that kind of stuff we have three choices here so at the un security council we can uh, our faction that is can remain in the shadows nothing will happen or we can quietly steer support to our faction which will gain us 25 influence and get a small opinion boost for resistance around the world but information about the resistance will be exposed to our enemies and finally, we can just, just stand up loud and proud, announce to the world our manifesto about our goals and who we are and what we stand for and, and so on. Get a large, nice news soundbite, get 50 influence, but we trigger a larger opinion boost, which is good, but more information about us is going to be handed to, the, uh, to our enemies, the other factions.
I'm going to go ahead and deliver the manifesto. We desperately need the public opinion boost if we're going to go after America. And um, we need that 50 influence. Uh, other factions you might be more cautious about this. They've got the more radicalized factions might want to stay in the shadows. And um, they might want to avoid attention from the other factions. So there are reasons why you might pick the other choices, not always pick this one. But with the resistance, we're we're pretty pretty straightforward, and uh, a lot of the world is going to agree with us. So they are here to cleanse our. All right, world. the servants have been encountered. Are our saviors, mm -hmm. and all who oppose them are enemies of the future. All right, they're the ones that we want to worry about the most. They're the ones that think the aliens are gods, and we should bow down and serve them. And um, that's not what the rest of us want. <laughs> so we're going to do everything we can to spoil the servants and their their plans. Anybody else? That was it. Just the servants. I was surprised. Sometimes I've had three or four uh, manifestos get uh, tossed out. Okay, so we're back to assigning assignments. We're on October 8th. Seven days have gone by, and all of our counselors are up and ready to go. Now, notice here on the picture of the counselor, it shows faction symbols. This indicates that each of those factions knows where she's at. She's, she's visible to these locations or these factions. So one thing we can do about this, because we don't want her to get kidnapped or, or targeted and so on, is we can use a go to ground action um, right here. Go to ground, go into hiding in an earth region to escape enemy detection and attacks. So we can go to ground to try to shake off anybody following us and trying to investigate us and so on. So I think for this round, I'm going to go ahead and do that. We're going to we're going to go to ground. Going off the grid. And we're going to not go to ground with this guy. I'm going to leave him up invisible because um, I want him to keep doing the public campaign. I will try to and then the last one, we're also going to go to ground to shake this off. So we're not going to do much this next week. Deep, come on. All right, that's all of our folks. We've got 99. We can go back and hire that fourth person, and I could possibly get a 60 cost person as well. So let's go take a look. I really want somebody that can public campaign. I'd like two people that can do that. And we'll see what else we've got on offer. I don't know if the list is going to have changed much. Activist, Inspector, Tech Mogul. I think it's mostly the same list. Uh, so the Rebel 5-6. Cannot do the public opinion. Assassinate, turning, extracting. Yeah, the, the 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 stats are okay, but the mission list is terrible. I'm probably not going to get anything out of the spy. Public campaign, but only a three persuasion. Investigate, extract, sabotage, steal. Uh, again, uh, I'm not too unhappy, but... Jeez, <laughs> they give me the stat I want, but then they give me almost no missions. Ugh, control in public, and that would be it, and then she'd be done. Aid persuasion, control in public's good, indulgent. Whoa, whoa, let's take a look at this guy. Wealthy, unifier, unifier fanatic, and quick learner. Quick learner is pretty important. That uh, lets you buy upgrades a lot faster. Augmentations cost 20% fewer XP. So as time passes, your characters gain your counselors gain XP, and when they get uh, it's 20 is about the mid the, the midpoint that you're looking for. You can go in and you can buy upgrades for their stats. You can get them traits or remove traits, things like that. So he can buy from that list 20% cheaper than the other folks. So he tends to level up faster, basically. Uh, but uh, a persuasion. He's got good control nation. He's got good public campaign. He can advise with his zero science, which is terrible again. Damn it! I just I'm not getting the the right combos of things. But I like this. I like the eight perception. But everything else is trash. He's terrible at everything else. Ah! Why are you doing this to me? That's the addict quick learner again. Who also can't do what I want. I think I'm going to have to go with the tech mogul. He's got control. He's got public campaign. 
Eh, not a lot else. We can always fire somebody and get a new person later. He's got a pretty good set of stats. Yeah, I, I think it's going to have to be the tech mogul. All right, so we got our fourth. We can't do this one until we get a certain research point done. But we've added to our crew. Let's bring, uh, let's bring him over to Canada. Nobody knows who he is. We got nobody uh, in the know. Let's check his numbers. What are we up to? Starting at 32. That's actually a pretty good starting point. I've got 69.7 influence left. I can get it up to a 72 if I spend 8. I think I'm going to go one more round of raising public opinion. Then we'll start trying to capture points. So let's switch over to public support. Toss a little bit of money in there to improve the chances. Let's go with 80. Making our case. All right, so we got two people doing public opinion, two people going into hiding to shake off pursuit. Very important. You're you're really playing a spy game in this early game. Um, it's really important to protect your people. A lot of things can be done to your folks, and you can do a lot of things to other folks. So it's kind of interesting in that regard. Uh, but you do want to be careful about playing defense. All right, so we're all done there. Um, let's look at our choices again. So we were going for the 100 point. Until we take a nation, we have almost no research generation. As soon as we start capturing control points and we can direct some science output to our faction, these are going to go really slow. Uh, so I'm not really going to bother changing anything here. It's just not going to happen until we start actually capturing. So. Our only hope is to understand what the aliens want with us and determine how to satisfy them without losing our independence. So, there you go. That's the protectorate, and that's their credo, their screed. They just want to come to come to an understanding with the uh, the aliens, uh, not lose our our own independence, but become a protectorate, so a self-governing uh, protectorate under the alien overall leadership, I guess. Anybody else? The Academy! Brothers and sisters. If we only convince them, we are worthy. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> All right, well, there's the Academy. That's the one I couldn't remember earlier. So this is the Earth's uh, too, optimis too optimistic scientific community. Uh, they're just under the belief that, uh, you know, if they're smart enough to travel the stars, then obviously they've gone beyond war and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, they, they've watched a lot of Star Trek. And there's a lot of war in Star Trek, too. But, uh, you know, they just want everybody to get along. And uh, they're not going to have much luck with that. Evading pursuit. Good ground mission complete. Good to know. Evading pursuit. Hopefully that fully removes all of the uh, notice to them. Public opinion. Ah, we failed. We rolled a 93. Damn it. <laughs> Our counselor got spotted. Not good. Yeah, I guess I maybe should have sent him underground after all. Public opinion is moving in our direction. So we got it one success. 75 we rolled out of uh, 80 was our top end. We only got 6% 6 boost. All our missions are done. Okay, you are going to... Let's take a look at our numbers again. Ooh, 44. We definitely got to start capturing now. I think I'll spend 4 influence at a 73%. This number goes... It doubles every time I move it up. So we start with a 5% bump for 1 point. So, well, no, that's bigger than that. That's 12%. I'm not sure how it varies, but just know that the, uh, the amount of success increase is going to scale based on how much influence you spend and the influence spent doubles every time so 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64 is the max so it's a diminishing return so you can keep squeezing more and more out but you get less and less for each expenditure uh, so let's go uh, uh, what do I got 85 with very little generation I really want to save as much influence as I can because the real hard part is when we try to start hitting the US but I'm also under a bit of a clock because other nations are going to be trying the same thing if I don't really get a handle on uh, these two nations as quickly as possible so it's time versus resource let's get this first one I'll spend it to get this first one I'm going to try to go easy after that all right, so she's clear. Let's send her over and see what her numbers look like, too. 56. Even better. 
So you'll see here right across the top, we've got the counselor. She's got a 12.8 base number. That's seven from her persuasion skill, plus our popular support rating in the nation, this blue section now. We've got it up to 31%, so we're getting a bonus because of the popular support we've generated. So that gives her a 12.8. It's comparing that versus a difficulty check based on the economy of the nation you're trying to influence. So if they're even, if it was 12 and 12, we'd have an exact 50% chance. That's, just, that's how the math works. Um, if it goes in either other direction, then you have a succeeding less or greater chance to start with. And then we can modify from there. So let's see if we can get two of them. We'll get it to a 79%. Bringing them on board. And then the last one, we're going to go to ground. That's the guy that got detected. So somebody's paying attention, and I need him to not get uh, not get investigated. Let's go take a vacation in uh, Southern California. Let's go to Disneyland. So he's going to go take a trip to Disneyland and go underground. It's not giving me the confirmation. He didn't actually go. Uh, interesting. How about we go to the Pacific Northwest? Why are you not letting me? Oh, it's I have the counselor here, but I don't think I had him actually selected there. Oh, never mind. <laughs> My bad. Keep forgetting I have to hit the uh, the actual go to command. All right, the last person. Nobody chasing. We have an opportunity to control nation again. Shall we try a clean sweep in Canada in one round? Just wrap it all up? I think let's try it. Let's see if we can get it. I'm going to go ahead and spend a little more. I really, really don't want to, but... Taking control. So we got three people trying to capture, and we got one person taking a vacation in Disneyland. Not going to change our research again. We can't buy another counselor. We are all set. Let's hope for the best. Going to ground complete. Great. Enjoy your time at Disneyland. We still lack support. Well, that's not great. <laughs> Once again, I'm rolling super high. I don't know. It feels like it's weird. I, I seem to have these long runs of really high numbers. And I know it's probably just random being random and all that. But man, is it obvious, and it really irks me. I had a game I played offline. I just started to test a few things, and I failed like seven in a row trying to control the U.S. at like 85% success rate. So I rolled above 85% like seven times in a row. Just, just that kind of stuff drives me so berserk when it happens. Please don't do it to the other three or the other two. We were unable to stop. <laughs> Here we go again! Uh, we got one out of three. <laughs> damn it. You're trying to make a clean sweep. No! God damn it! Ah, humanity first got in already. Uh, now they might grab the executive before I can get in there. Uh, this is not good. This is not good. Already I'm having to fight somebody. Oh, crap. Well, this is going to be interesting. I can't believe I failed two out of three at 80 plus or 80 percent. Uh, God damn humanity first. Um, well, now we got a few things we got to do. If I can get that last control point, we're in the driver's seat, but hardly home free. And they're probably going to do the same as me. They're probably going to try to hit Mexico next. So how to do this? I'm not 100% sure how it determines who gets to go first if we both set control nations. If we both go after... Ready for my mission. Yeah. If we both go after that with a control nation action, I don't know how it determines who gets to go first. I have no idea how that gets decided. If the game flips a coin or what. Because I've had circumstances in the game where I've got it first and I've had other times where an enemy has gotten it first. So I don't know how it de decides it. Uh, so they're teeny tiny on public opinion. I mean, they're down there at 3%. So how they got that when I failed, that's what boggles me. They had to have made a chai and either spent a bunch of influence or got super lucky, one or the other. 
So I think what I'll do is I think I will split things up a bit. So you're going to go ahead and try to get the control in. And once again, I have to spend influence I really don't want to. We'll be running this place in no time. You, we are going to bring up on a public opinion mission. Try to raise our public opinion. That will fire off before the uh, the attempt to take over the point uh, goes. You, we are going to try... I probably have a terrible purge chance. Yeah, terrible purge chance. We're going to try to crack down their, uh, their control point. Targeting their center of power. And the last guy... Uh, there's only one slot. Do I double up trying to take it? In case I roll poorly? Or... Do I head to Mexico and start working? I think I'm going to head to Mexico and start working. What we're going to hope happens is that I win the last slot and that I get a successful crackdown on their position and then the next round I'll have that same guy try to purge him out and that'll give me control, soul control over Canada. That's if things go exactly the way I'm hoping. It won't, probably, but we're going to hope. So we're going to send this last guy down here to start raising public campaign. Toss some money at it. I will try to sway the public. All right, our assignments are done. Now, we do have a limited amount of control over Canada. So if we take a look at the priorities tab for Canada, you'll notice here we have a section that has the funding priorities. Every country based on its GDP generates monthly investment points. So 12.2 investment points are available. They are being split between these categories within these percentage allocations. So the number of bubbles is being divided and figured into a percentage of the total. So the most bubbles here is getting 25%, etc. cetera. Um, I only have control over the middle column. So the country itself still controls the final column. Humanity First controls the first one. You can see what priorities they set. And then I control the middle. At the moment, I'm not too concerned about this. It's not going to have much impact until I really get full control. And then we'll come back and we'll micro this. But uh, I am for sure going to cut funding, cut space flies to nothing, no army. Um, I don't need... Well, I kind of need spoils. Not worried about... Nah, uh, we'll, we'll leave one funding, and yeah, I'll leave those alone as well. All right, so we've set our portion of the uh, the budget for the investment points, and uh, we're all done. Let's see if we get lucky. What'll suck is if uh, the Humanity First somehow manages to take that third one. Hey, that helps. <laughs> that helps. We've got an 11% bump on a critical roll. I really would rather have had this on the capture roll. I'm going to roll 5% on the public campaign. I'm going to roll 95% on the capture attempt, and I'm going to be angry. The control is vulnerable now. So we succeeded in our crackdown mission. That's going to render that one control point of humanity first vulnerable. We'll get a bonus on attempting to, uh, to purge it. Their yes. All right. So we got the third point. So that's great. Everything's working wonderfully so far. We got our people in place. Oh wait, no. We uh, that was the other public campaign. That's the capture. So we've got two of the three control points. We've successfully done a crackdown on his control point, which you can see from the little orange. I'll zoom in here. <laughs> uh, hey, hey. Yeah, so the little orange symbol on the top corner here indicates that uh, there's a crackdown going on for that. Okay, uh, let's see. So we absolutely need to send... I forget who it was. Ready Mago for my mission. Magotzi? Not Magotzi. Uh, At your service. 